Hey everybody, I'm Ryan Nielsen and this is Ryan's Trumpet. In the first episode of Ryan's Trumpet, I talk extensively about some new ways that I've been getting curious about practicing the upper register that have been super helpful to me. In that video, I mentioned that there were two foundational principles that were necessary to make it so that that high register practice is effective. And the first of those principles is center. And that's what I'm gonna focus on today. One of the most helpful ways that I got taught to think about center on the trumpet was by thinking of the center of the trumpet like a target, uh, where, where the bullseye on the target would be what we think of as center. And uh, this is an analogy that I got taught by one of my mentors, Dave Hickman, and he would talk about how uh, he would label each part of the target with a different number. So the bullseye is a five. Anything above the bullseye would be like six, seven, eight, nine. If you're going above the center of the pitch, we go back to the bullseye as a five. Anything below the bullseye would be like four, three, two, one. So putting those numbers on it actually gave me a really great way to start thinking about center. And it's been really beneficial to my students to give them a, a sort of concrete way for us to talk about whether or not they're finding center on the instrument. So the bottom line is, is the challenge of teaching center is that we're actually trying to learn to have new ears. We're trying to hear in a way we don't hear yet. So how do we get to a point where we can hear and experience for ourselves what a five is, what the center of the horn really is? Well, one of the most effective exercises for this that, that I've been shown is lip bends. Lip bends can be approached a lot of different ways and most of those have really great benefits for my own playing and for my students. But the approach to a lip bend that we're gonna talk about today is, is entirely about discovering center, finding the five. So I'm gonna demonstrate a half step lip bend now I'm going to start at a five. I'm going to bend all the way down to a zero. I'm going to come back up through one, two, three, four. And when you hear it get to a five, the sound will just open up. It'll open up quite a bit. And then I'm going to go past the five up to a six or a seven, and you'll hear the sound close again. So if you listen really closely, you'll be able to hear that. close off as I go past the five into a six or a seven. So that approach to lip bend uh, kind of comes from like the, the Hickman School of Pedagogy um, and has been incredibly beneficial to me and my students and I'll post a link in the comments below that will give you access to like a set of embouchure studies that Dave created that are fantastic for this kind of exploration and that will do a lot to help develop health in the embouchure. There's another approach to lip bends that I've also had seen really benefit my students um, and it comes out of the Caruso, the Carmine Caruso lineage. Um, and it's where we're going to start on the note and then we're going to false finger a half step above and then just open up back to the note. And for some students doing this just immediately drops them into a five. So I'm going to play a G. I'm gonna finger an A flat, but keep the pitch G and then just open to the G and let it open up into a five. I found that both of those approaches to lip bends have been really helpful to my students. If a student happens to be playing 
most of the time on a six or a seven, sometimes that false fingering will be a little bit quicker path into hearing this. I would say that by and large, the students I have the opportunity to work with, they have a tendency to play above center. So when they play the horn, they tend to go up to a six uh, or even start above five um, and start on that. So what I want to do, uh, one thing that is really helpful to them is when I play back and forth side by side of playing center, which we're calling the five. So I'm going to play the five and then I'm going to play a six or a seven and then I'm going to play the five and then I'm going to play the six or the seven so that you get a chance to hear just how subtle the difference is and what a giant difference it makes in your ability to move around the horn easily. Here's a five. Here's a seven. Here's a five. Here's a seven. Five, six, five, six. It's such a slight difference, but I kid you not, the difference between being able to freely move up the horn into the upper register, truly the top of all of our registers, essentially the place where we leave the five. Once we leave the five and go into six or seven, we only have a couple more steps before we're gonna just have to tap out. So there are a few really common pitfalls that we can stumble into as trumpeters when we try these exercises. The first pitfall to watch out for is making sure that you're not opening your teeth to accomplish the bend. So we don't want our students or ourselves to go. If I open my jaw to accomplish the bend, I'm kind of setting myself up for a potential injury later. The second uh, most common uh, pitfall among my students is that when they start trying to do these bends, they relax everything. And so the sound, uh, when they do the bend, gets really fluffy, sort of like this. If the bend, if the volume of the bend gets softer, probably relaxing too much to accomplish the bend. The truth is, to pull off the bend, you're actually gonna feel your setup firm up quite a bit if you do it in the way we want to. And the way we can make sure we're doing it in the way we want to is by the sound. So we want a really nasal sound on that bend. In order to get that nasal full sound on the bend, I've got to, got to firm up. I can't relax everything to do that. If you really want to understand what center is, you have to spend hundreds and hundreds of hours listening to great trumpet music to get a sense of what it sounds like to hear a trumpet being played right in the center. One of my favorite resources for that right now is, uh, is Hulk and Hardenberger's kind of gift to the trumpet world by recording the Charlier Etudes uh, for YouTube over the course of the pandemic definitely worth checking out. Well, that wraps up uh, today's hang on center on the trumpet. I hope that you find some of these things useful. Uh, these are just different doors into discovering this, so please give yourself permission to get creative, to get curious, to explore these different exercises and find what works for you. Um, of course, none of this is the one right way. All of this is, is very much different doors that teachers have developed to try and help us experience directly what it feels like and sounds like to find the five.